Hello YouTube and hello viewers and welcome back to yet another episode of creating a 2D side scroller using Unreal Engine 4. Um, again, very long episode, oh my goodness gracious me, so long. Um, and thank you very much for everyone that is subscribing um, and enjoying my videos. Um, this session um, is might be a little bit lengthy. I'm going to try and keep it under my 20 minutes as, uh, as much as I can do um, for this one. Um, however, I have to split into two parts. There's no ways I can do this in um, just one part. Um, reason because the life system is just a little bit more complicated um, than everything else we have done. Sort of follows the same process um, of everything that we have done already, but we have to do everything from scratch, um, which means we have to spend a little bit more time in things like our HUD um, and etc. for this episode. So bear with me. Uh, hopefully we will keep this under 20 minutes. Uh, but without further ado, let's get ourselves started. So where we left off in our last session is we managed to finish our coin system Whereas we would collect coins, or the player would collect coins, and then we would then count the coins up to about 100, and then they'll reset. And the plan was is that if we collected so many coins, uh, we could then add an extra life or something to the character. Um, and that's something we're going to start working on right now. So what we need to do is we need, need to navigate ourselves to our HUD this time, okay? Because we want to show the user how many lives they've currently got um, inside the game. Now remember, my one might be named something different compared to yours when you first started the series. Remember, I lost everything and I had to redo um, our series to exactly where we got up to. But I sort of just did that on the top of my head. I didn't go through my videos again. That would have been a bit silly. Um, so I just sort of tried to remember how much we did um, and put it back in. So open up your HUD, okay? And you should have your progress bar. Um, so this is how much health we've got. Um, that obviously depletes depending on um, how much damage we've taken and etc. We've got our coin collection. Uh, this is really important because obviously these are coins that we had here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to make one for lives. Um, now you could say number of lives with a text box and then put another one there if you wanted to. Um, that's fine. But for just this this episode, uh, we're just going to stick it with um, one block here. Uh, I mean, we could put another one next to it, but um, just to save time, we'll just keep it in one block. Okay, and what we need to do, since that HUD's done, we're just going to save that for now. And we'll come back to that in a minute um, because we need to look at something first. So we need to go back to our 2D side scroller blueprint uh, where we've done all our coin system and our damage system and our health system. So we need to go back to that one. If you can't remember, get there. Oh, dear. All right. If you look on your map, go back to 2D side scroller BP, go into your blueprints and open up your blueprint for your character. Now, just like what we did with all the other ones, we need to give ourselves a variable for the player's health, okay? So we're gonna create ourselves a new variable and we're gonna call this one char, char lives, okay? So the character lives. Now remember, it's not a Boolean. Um, we are actually gonna make this into an integer because we are using whole numbers, for example, one, two, three, four, and etc. okay? So we compile and save, and we get to choose how many lives the character will start off with inside the game. This is dependent on how many lives you want to give the character to start. Um, if you want to make it extremely difficult, give them one. Um, if you want to make it you know, fairly easy, give them 100, I suppose. Um, but in this case, we're just going to give them five lives. That way we have a bit more to work with um, and a bit more tally we can use. Okay, so we're just going to save that. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually make ourselves a new event. Um, and we're going to call this event, so we're going to create ourselves a custom event. And that event is we're going to call the lives system. Uh, just name it something that you would remember. Okay, so the live system, like a coin system, as we we'll call it, live system. Uh, compile and save that because we need to add an input. All right. And that input is going to be uh, lives. Uh, out because we're going to take lives out. Uh, we don't want to give him lives. We're going to take them away. Um, so we're going to change that to an integer because we need to make sure it follows the same strategy um, of what we got with the coin system. Now that's in place, uh, we don't really need to visit that again um, until we come back to creating the system and how it works. Um, so we can just get out of this one and go back to our display because this is where we're going to tinker with um, for some of this session. 
Now we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did with this um, this function for the text field. Um, we're going to do exactly the same for this live text box. Okay, we're going to bind our text box. So remember the text box, not the colors and stuff. We don't want to bind that, um, but we want to bind the text. So we're going to create ourselves a binding. Okay, which is going to give us a new binding. Okay, and we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did with this one here with the coins. So if you wanted to, you could actually copy this if you wanted. Um, that's fine. Control C, go into your text one and Control V. Um, if you want to do that, uh, you can to save yourself some time. Uh, if not, we can do everything from scratch um, if you want to learn how to do it like I did, um, which was all the way from the beginning. So remember, uh, we need to make sure that we can access our uh, custom event. So we need to cast, so cast to our 2D or whatever you've named your character blueprint. Um, depending if you made your own um, and etc., you would then obviously cast to that character itself. And remember, the object is going to be get uh, player. And remember, it's the character. Um, so we're going to get the player character. And then what we need to do is, is we need to look at how do we work with our um, lives that we've currently got that we need to display. So if you remember correctly, we had to do this. We need to grab our live system from our character. So from here. So we need to get this, this char lives. Okay. So our target, um, we're going to drag off. I'm going to say char lives. Now we should be able to see that um, because it's already connected. Um, and if we put context sensitive on, it works this time. So we're actually going to get our character lives. Okay. And we're going to return that value back to there. And remember, it's going to print it out um, as a string. Okay. Um, we could use, uh, I might leave this for another series, but you could use this thing called, uh, I think it's called an append. Um, but we'll, we'll leave that for another episode um, where you can start placing text values um, with whatever you're grabbing. But we'll leave that one for now. There's, there's no need for that just yet. And what we'll do is we'll attach that directly into that node there. Okay, so that's basically saying let's get the text from this 2D side scroller of the current lives that the character has. So if we had to play this now, it should display how many lives that character has currently got inside the game itself. Okay, remember that's everything we need to do with the HUD. There's nothing else we need to do apart from doing this section to display the information to the end user or the, the player or the game or whatever you want to call them. Okay. So now this is done, we can leave the HUD alone. Um, so we can close that down and we're going to start with our blueprint here. Okay. So we're going to actually start working with our blueprint. Now, the problem that we have here is that with our lives that we currently got is You know, we might not even need to use this event. We'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, because... Uh, well, I mean, we can do it. It's fine. I mean, we, there's different ways we can tinker with it. That's, that, that's completely fine. That's not an issue. Okay. But what we're going to do is we need to go back to our damage system here. Okay. And what we're going to do is with the damage system, we're going to be able to take one of these lives away from the character. Okay. So on our damage system, we already had this thing here saying dead. All right. So when that health hits dead, it did something. Okay. Um, and what we wanted to do is we want to do um, or fire off the event or we can make a little bit of an equation for the subtraction of one of our lives here. Okay, so we want to do a bit of subtraction. Now, what we could do, okay, if we have a look here, we've got this set node here. Okay, so we have got this set here. Now, if I had to drag off here and say set char lives, okay, so set char lives, okay, that will automatically put it to zero. So let's just try this. So let's put this to um, 0.25. This is just a test room. I've only got one damage piece inside the game. So um, if I hit this now, right, so the, the dangerous bit, notice that it set my lives directly to zero. Now, that's obviously something we don't want to happen. We want to do it that 
um, we would subtract one um, from our live system. Okay, and it does work because what we could do is we could get our lives. So get our lives. All right, so we're going to get our character lives. And just like we did up here, all right, with our plus, instead of plusing, we're going to subtract. Okay, so we're going to minus. All right, so we're going to do an integer minus an integer. Okay, now what we need to remember is that we are subtracting one life if that equals zero. So we're going to take one life out and we're going to reset how many lives the character has. Okay, so we're going to reset how many lives that character then has left. So if we play now, if I run into that object, notice it will drop me to four. However, did anyone notice the problem that we have is that once that reduces to zero, okay, our lives drop to four, but the health bar doesn't reset. It still stays at, um, at a zero base, a zero float. So we need to reset that back to its full value. So now we set that value, what we could do is, we can expand this out a bit more. We can then also set, okay, so we're going to set our char health, okay, so we're going to set our char health back to one, okay, because remember that was our float, um, 1.0 being 100, okay, so we're going to set that back to 100, and what should happen now is if I take the damage, I lose the life, and then my health then repeats itself back to where it should be. So let's do a little bit of a test. Let's put some more dodgy things in. So let's put um, another bad pumpkin there, another bad pumpkin there. And we'll just put out a lot of pumpkins just so we can test to see um, exactly how this is working. Okay, so hit that, we lose life, still lose lives. Oops, there's a heart there. Lose a bit of life, lose a bit of life, lose a bit of life, dead. You lose life, so you've lost a life considering that the characters, I'm sorry, I was meant to say health, not lives. So you're losing health, which meant you lose a life, okay? And the system will keep working over and over and over again, okay? But you're going to come to a problem that, well, what happens if the lives are equal to zero, okay? So if your lives actually hit zero, so remember we had this compare here, okay? So we did all these coins and then we compared it and then we're like, okay, well, if that is equal to zero, then do something. So technically, this is not meant to be there just yet. We should have compare. Now remember, this is a integer. Okay, so we're going to make sure this is our input. Okay, and if our lives equal are zero, okay, then we're going to print a string and that string is going to be game over. Okay, so that's going to be game over. All right. However, if it is more than zero, so if our lives are more than zero, okay, we can then set our character health back to one. Crazy, I know. It's very confusing. But let's just check this. So let's change our lives to one. Right, so we can test to see how the system's working. So if we play, I take damage, it hits zero. Notice that it then says game over because my health has been set to zero. Sorry, my lives have been set to zero and my health has been depleted. So notice there's no full on my health now, nothing, okay? And it's just targeted zero lives and that's it, game over. And what you would do is after this part, you should start expanding yourself over and over again, or you could reset the game, or you could display a screen, um, or you could say, I don't know, there's many things you can do, and we, we might add that later on um, if needs be. But this part is really, really important, because you know, we're going to get our character lives, then obviously subtract one, um, then we're going to see if it is more than zero, then we can reset our health. But if it's equal to zero, so obviously no lives, then obviously the game is then finished. Okay, but let's say, for example, you managed to gain 100 coins. Okay, not a problem. We can do exactly the same thing here. Okay, so what we're saying here is that if the coins that we have are 100, but it's equal to 100, it's going to set the coins to zero. 
Okay. Which is fine. Okay. However, we also wanted to do this here. Okay. So we actually wanted to do this. So we could copy this. Okay. So we can copy that info. Let's just separate this out, paste that in. All right. So we're going to say, okay, if that is equal to a hundred, we're going to set our character lives, but instead of minusing one, we need to change that. That's going to be plus. So we're going to say integer plus integer. I'm going to plus one. Okay. So we're going to plus one. Make sense. And if the um, number of lives is greater than zero, we can then reset our coins. Okay. And if it's not greater than zero, then obviously we can say exactly the same thing. So we can reset it um, back to zero. So everything goes back to normal. So let's see that working. So getting a coin, I'm going to die now. Ugh. Right. Um, we need to change a few things. Let's move these deadly things around. Um, let's bring some more coins forward. Okay. So gain a coin, gain a coin, and there we go. So see your live system then ticks. It's gone to two and the coins have reset to zero. Okay. Whereas if, say for example, uh, let's move the coins away. Okay. And let's take some damage. So notice I've got 98 coins, one life. If I hit the box, I lose all my coins. Oh, actually, that number of coins is still at 98. Why has that happened? So, set that. If lives are, I don't think so, we can. That's very strange. So, coins. So compare with zero. If it's greater, if it's greater than zero, it should work. Set char coins to zero. If it's equal to set it to zero. It's a bit strange, don't know why that didn't work. So take damage. It's a bit odd. Let's just plug that into there. See if it's saying thing it's less than. Shouldn't be. Oh, well, that's strange. I'll have a look at that. I'll, I'll have more more of a peek into that that situation. But what we're having a look at is just the basics of how the um, health system would work with lives um, by taking damage. So that was our damage system then. Okay. Um, and then basically, so we didn't really need this to be honest. I'm sorry. We could have actually deleted that. We didn't really need that. And you could have separated if you wanted to. Um, but we just kept it all as one piece. Okay. So when we gained 100 coins, we added a life to our character. Okay. Um, so if it was greater than um, zero, which it should have been, it should have set the coins to zero. We can delete that one. That's not needed. Um, and that system's now working. And then obviously the damage system, if we took so much damage, so if it was um, equal to zero, we subtracted a life, set our health back to one if it was greater than zero lives. And then if we had anything that was equal to zero, um, we then said game over on that one. And that's pretty much it. That's how the health system would work um, or a life system inside the game itself, which is quite surprising because I actually thought this was going to take longer, which means we didn't need to split this series, which is quite nice. Um, it's all one series. Okay. Again, thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in for this episode. Um, I think I might have went a bit too fast in this one. It was just, I was very conscious about time, keeping it under the 20 minutes. I hope you did enjoy the video. Um, again, remember, please subscribe, like, um, ask me for anything that you want to learn. I can always add that into my list. Um, remember to follow, subscribe. Um, follow me on Twitter. I've now made a Twitter account. Um, if you want to follow me on that, I don't even know how to use that, uh, but follow me on there if you want to. Again, thank you very much. I'm Wayne, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.